Hi, Deirdre McNamara here from Letterkenny IT. In this uh, video, we're going to take a look at the presentation uh, of, da of data. At the end of this session, uh, you should be able to construct a frequency table from raw data. And in the last set of slides, we took a look at what raw data was. Present data in a variety of diagrammatic forms, and that includes bar and column charts um, and different types of charts that are available. Uh, construct a frequency table using class intervals or a grouped frequency table um, and choose between the different types uh, of presentations uh, of your data and decide which one is best uh, considering the data type that you have. So raw data. Raw data consists of the individual bits of data given, for example, on questionnaires or observed when you're doing some sort of research. For example, you might be doing a traffic survey, how many people are coming into the canteen, how many people are walking past the front of the hotel, um, what uh, are the numbers that we have observed within the uh, research. Primary data is usually uh, in this form. Uh, so, for example, you might ask people, how many sec texts do you send per week? Uh, and the raw first person might have said five, zero, uh, etc. Um, often there is too much detail to see any pattern within the data. OK, so when you give people raw data, uh, you haven't formulated it in any way. Uh, and often there's just so much detail there that you've swamped them uh, with data. Uh, and as a result, uh, it fails as a means of communication. For example, uh, if we look at the next slide uh, and I ask you which is the highest and which is the lowest, what was the maximum, what was the minimum, uh, it's quite hard to find them. So uh, raw the raw data hasn't been sorted, it's just uh, as it was observed within the uh, research. So here's the raw data. Uh, and again, if I ask you which was the highest and which was the lowest, it's hard to work it out, okay? And it could take you quite a while. So actually, number two is the lowest and 249 uh, is the highest, okay? So this is raw data uh, and, and within this, it's a way of hiding information. If you don't want to, people to clearly see the information, sometimes people provide raw data um, and it makes it hard to see the patterns within the data. Okay, what is an array? An array is an arrangement of raw numerical data in ascending or descending order of magnitude. So basically it's raw data that has been ordered, either getting smaller or larger. Uh, so for example, uh, in the last slide, we looked at how many texts people were sending per week. The raw data was here, starting off with five, uh, zero, two, four, two, six, eight. There's no order to these. And then creating an array is just putting these numbers in numerical order, okay? Um, so starting off with zero, one, there were three twos, okay? So you don't just put the two twice once, you put it in three times because we found that there were three twos within the data, okay? So it's uh, raw data that has been ordered and that's what an array is. Okay, so for example, create an array of that raw data hit pause and give it a try. And there's an array. All we've done is put it in order. So the zero is first, then there are two twos, then there are two fours, then there's an eight and there's a nine. And you can see it's gradually getting bigger. So an array is just your raw data put in order. Okay, creating a, a simple frequency table. A simple frequency table will put all of the data into order uh, and it's, it immediately shows uh, the highest and the lowest. Um, and it also gives you an impression of any peaks or troughs within the data. So this is the information we took from the previous slide. So how many people sent zero texts per week? There was one person who sent zero texts per week. There were one person who sent one text a week. There were three people who sent two texts per week, okay? There were zero people that sent three texts per week. So it's as important to put in the zeros in here as it is uh, to put in the ones. So it's very important that you put that. So, but you can clearly see within a simple frequency table, the lowest value was zero and the highest value was nine. 
Okay, so again, showing the lowest and the highest. Uh, again, in terms of troughs, looking up here, you can quickly see that three is the highest number here. There were quite a few people who sent two. So again, a simple frequency table is a better means of communication than an array because you can see, clearly see the troughs and the peaks. Um, and it also may show if the data was skewed or uh, had a particular uh, high volume in a particular area or not. Okay, creating a, a frequency table uh, from the following raw data. Okay, so in this case here, we have uh, different rooms in a hotel. Okay, room number 201, room number 202, room number 203. In room number 201, there were two guests. In room number 202, there were three guests. In room number 203, there was one guest. 204, there was two guests. Room number 205, there were three guests. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a simple frequency table and showing how many rooms had one guest in them, how many rooms had two guests in them, how many rooms had three guests in them. Okay, I'm just going to pick up the pen here now. So the best way to do this is to cross them off uh, the list here. So how many, this one here is a two and we'll put it in there, put it in a little tick. Uh, this one here was a three, we put it in here. This one here was a one and we put it in here. A two and we put it in here. A three and we put it in here, my lovely handwriting. A one, put it in here. A one, put it in here. A three, put it in here. A one, put it in here and a two and put it in here. Now we count these up, one, two, three, four, three and three. Okay, and this is a simple frequency table. And that method I've just demonstrated is a very good method for making sure that you get them right. The next thing I do is I check four plus three plus three is 10. How many pieces of data had I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah, I've made sure that that all tallies. And here is the frequency table uh, all typed up nicely for you, okay? Looking specifically at grouped frequency tables, um, so uh, a grouped frequency table is where you've got an interval, okay? So sometimes you can't do out a simple frequency table because the table would end up too large. So for example, you couldn't have, uh, for example, a hundred lines in your table. It's just too much uh, information and you need to summarize it in some form. So that's when you use a grouped frequency table. So in this case here, we've got a, an age group over here, so under 10, uh, and there were five people uh, in that category between 10 and under 20 is 25 and the whole way up and 70 and over uh, was there were 10 people here um, and this is called a class interval here okay um, so uh, where there are a large number of values uh, of the variable then the simple frequency table will not clarify the position much okay so grouping variables together uh, and you'll see the pattern of the data and you can see quite clearly here that there's a sort of a peak here between 20 and 40 and it's clear there's very few at the lower end and very few at the upper end uh, over 70. So class intervals, the number and size of each interval depends on the quantity and range of the data. Generally, and as far as this course is concerned, we want to have between 8 and 15 intervals or 8 and 15 lines in the table. Okay, now those numbers 8 and 15 will appear in our method later on and often people wonder why did you use 8, why did you use 15 and the reason we use 8 and we use 15 is because we want to have between 8 and 15 lines in the resulting uh, grouped frequency table. Uh, other statistics lecturers might say that you want to have between 5 and 10 lines in the table. But as far as this course is concerned, we want between 8 and 15 intervals or lines in your grouped frequency table. Uh, the width of each interval is called the class interval. 
uh, and the width should be a nice convenient or a nice round number. So for example, you don't want to have uh, ages between one and five and a half, between five and a half and 11, okay? That's just a strange number to go up in. So you want to go up in nice round numbers. So for example, you can go up in fives or you can go up in tens, twenties, twenty-fives, fifties, one hundreds, five hundreds or thousands. They're all nice round numbers to count up in, okay? Uh, a good rule of thumb is if I turned around to you and said count up to 5,000 in whatever uh, number you've gone with, would you be happy? So if I said to you, for example, count up to 5,000 in tens, it might be quite a dull job, but it'd be quite easy. You could easily count up in tens, easy enough to count up in twenties, easy to go up in twenty fives. If I said to you count up to 5,000 in twenty sevens, Okay, 27, 27 and 27 is what, you know, it'd be quite difficult to go up in that. So the rule of thumb is, um, would it be easy to count up in that number? So that's the nice round number. And here's the most commonly used uh, nice round numbers. One or two might be other ones at the lower end of the scale. Um, and so the method then we have is find the range. And the range is the difference between the lowest number uh, and the highest number in, in the data. Okay, so class limits then. Uh, the upper limit of one class, you need to make sure that it doesn't coincide with the lower limit uh, of the next class. So creating a class interval, first of all, find the maximum, find the minimum, find the range, which is your maximum minus your minimum, and that's the range. Now you take this range here that you've just calculated and you divide by eight. Why eight? The reason we divide by eight is because we want to end up in the resulting table with between eight and 15 rows or lines in the table or intervals in the table, okay? So we take the range and we divide by eight and we get an answer and I'm gonna call that answer X here, okay? Or some sort of answer, okay? We take the range, this one back up here again, not your answer here, the range, which is your maximum minus the minimum, you take the range and you divide by 15 and you get an answer here. And what you need to do next is find a nice round number between the first answer here you got when you divided by eight and the second answer you got when you divided by 15. Okay, find a nice round number, for example, we said 5, 10, 20, 25, nice round number between these two answers. So in the next slides, we'll take a look at an example of us doing that. Okay, so for example, uh, if we were looking at the number of texts that somebody sent per month, if the maximum number was 350 and the minimum was 3, so the range then is going to be your 350 minus your 3 which gives us 347. So our range now is 347. The method then said, take your range and divide by eight. Okay, so 347 divided by eight gives us 43, roughly 43. Take the range here again, the 347, and divide by 15, and we get roughly 23. Now, the next step is the bit that people often have difficulty with. We have to find a nice round number between 23 and 43. Okay, so going up from 23, 24, 25, 25 is a nice round number. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30 is okay. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 35, mm, okay. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. So they're the numbers in between 23 and 43. To me, the one that stands out is 25. I'd like to count up in 25s. 25 is quite a nice round number, okay? Acceptable numbers would be maybe 30. 30 would be okay. 40 would be okay. 20 is wrong. 20 is lower than 23. It doesn't fall between 23 and 43. Okay, so 20 is too small, 45 or 50 is too big. It has to fall between the 23 and the 43. So 25 is probably the number that I would go with. Okay, and that's what you'd go up in. That would be your class interval. Okay, so let's go through this one here.
um, if your minimum is three and your maximum is two, it's 200, okay? So your range is gonna be the 200 minus the three, which gives you 197. Okay, 197, we took the range and we divided by eight. Okay, 197 divided by eight gave us 24. 197 divided by 15 gave us 13. What's the nice round number between 24 and 13? So let's count 13, 14, 15. We could go with 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 is a possibility. 20 is quite nice to count up in. 21, 22, 23, 24. I think 20 is the obvious one to go up in. Okay, so hence we start with from 0 to 20. Okay, greater than 20. To 40 making sure there's no overlap okay so if we had 20 it would fall in here 20 is not greater than 20 so that's why 20 would go into this category here and you need to make sure there's no overlap between your intervals okay so 20 to 40 right up as far as your maximum so greater than 120 to 200 the next thing we do then is we put in each of these pieces of data here we cross them off as we do them and we put them into the categories here so I'll just give an example of that Okay, so five is going to go in here, six will go in here, eight will go in here, 22 ooh, goes in here, three, four, 66, okay, 66 is going to come in here, seven, Eight, ten, two hundred goes down here, one hundred and fifty five goes in here, one hundred and seventy goes in here, thirty three goes in here, twenty two is here, fifty six is here, eighty eight is here, 11 is here, I'm running out of space, 98 is here, and 109 is in here. Okay, then we count all of these up, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so 9, okay, we've got 3, we've got 1, we've got 1, we've got two, we've got one. The big mistake people make is they leave this blank. This isn't blank, this is zero. There were zero people um, who had between 120, over 120 uh, and 140. So zero is the correct answer there. One, one, one. Now we need to make sure that when we add up all of these, so nine and three is 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I've added up all of those and they add up to 20. Okay, and we go back to our raw data and we count them off. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. There are 20 pieces of data and I have 20 pieces of data out here. So they, they tally. Okay, so you just check your frequency table to make sure you haven't lost anything. Okay, and here is the answers done out nicely for you. Okay, and again, uh, just typed out for you. Now, um, this one here is just showing you if the maximum, if we replace the 200 up here with a 500, okay, you can see your range is now going to be quite different. So 500 minus 3 gives you 497. 497 divided by 8 gave us 62. 497 divided by 15 gives us 33. So what's the right nice round number between 33 and 62? Well, the one that's shouting at me here is 50. So 50 is a nice round number between 33 and 62. Okay, so um, then we're now moving up in 50s. So 0 to 50 and the whole way up. Okay, and you can see we've got a big huge gap here with loads of zeros and we have a single one out here. So it has quite a difference uh, in your frequency table. Again, 
Why divide by 8? Why divide by 15? We want it to end up with between 8 and 15 intervals across the way. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We ended up with 10. 10 is between 8 and 15, so that's perfect. Okay. Uh, let's go through uh, this one here. Hit pause uh, and try it yourself. Okay, so your maximum was three, uh, your minimum was zero, your maximum was 370. So 370 minus zero is 370, so your range is 370. 370 divided by 8 gives you 46. 370 divided by 15 gave you 24. A nice round number between 24 and 46 is 25. 20 would be wrong because 20 is lower here. Sometimes people go under. So between 24 and 46, so 24, 25, 26, 27, the whole way up to 46, 25 is the obvious number to go with there. And we've done out uh, our intervals, making sure that there's no overlap uh, between them. And then you mark in each date item. Okay. Here are some more questions you can go with uh, and practice these uh, and then if you hit pause and when you're ready, uh, move on with the video. Okay, so if you don't use the 8 and 15 rule, sometimes a grouped frequency table can be taken too far. So for example, if you're looking at age groups, in this case, we've only got two intervals. We don't have between 8 and 15, we've only got two. So we've got 300 people under 40 and 150 people over 40. Now we have no idea, are these 300 people all babies or are they all 39? We don't know, okay? 40 and over, are, are these people all 105? Or are they all 41? We don't know. It's been too summarized. Okay. And that's why we insist on having between 8 and 15. Spreadsheets make it very easy to carry these out uh, and they'll automatically uh, create a frequency table for you. And we'll take a look at that in doing Excel. And there is a video available uh, on YouTube on how to uh, create uh, frequency tables as well. So presenting discrete data, uh, discrete data can only take on a whole numbers or, or, or whole values. So for example, how many, um, how many uh, brothers and sisters do you have? These are whole numbers, okay? How many children do you have? They're whole numbers, okay? Uh, and again, uh, it's important to take it, that into account uh, when you're presenting uh, the data in a diagram. Okay, the most uh, commonly used illustration methods are histograms or bar charts uh, or pie charts uh, are also used quite commonly. Uh, pictograms, and we'll take a look at what they are later on, are used but not so commonly. Histogram. A histogram is a chart of a grouped uh, frequency table. Uh, a visual a representation of a frequency distribution of, of quantitative data. The classes or intervals are shown on the horizontal. So a horizontal is across the bottom and on the vertical axis is the frequency. Okay, that's on the height. Okay. Uh, bars uh, of the appropriate heights can be used to represent the number of observations or the frequency within each class. So, here is bar charts uh, are used for categorical data. Okay, we've got categories over here and you'll notice that a bar chart has a gap between the categories. Okay, uh, and here's a histogram. Okay, so a histogram then has no gaps. Okay, and so they go right up and again, it's usually a, a grouped frequency table that has been uh, used, um, has been displayed using a histogram. Pie charts uh, are useful when there's a small number of, ca of categories and also accuracy uh, is not too important. Uh, it's harder to read the detail uh, of a pie chart. So for example, uh, there's a small number of categories here 
and we've got the information over here and here is uh, a pie chart of the of the um the results now it's very quick to see that the south is the largest okay you can tell that midlands is possibly a little bit less it might be harder if we didn't have the percentages listed here to know that wales and north weren't the same size okay it's harder to read the detail unless it's printed out f for you pictograms pictograms uh, they create an impact they're usually just for effect uh, it's harder to read uh, the information that's in them uh, they do attract attract attention but they can be very misleading it's hard to read it uh, they're often used um, to sort of catch somebody's eye uh, but they're not scientific and often not serious uh, again not recommended uh, for scientific purposes and again here is an example exactly what does that mean what does that blank space there mean it's really hard to read presenting continuous data continuous data can take on any value and this is reflected in the available means of illustrating it so if you can have a 0 0.5 or a 0 0.3 or a 0 0.7 that's continuous data uh, the most widely used diagrams are histograms that we saw previously uh, or line graphs and you probably have seen these when you were at school uh, scatter diagrams are also common as well uh, and Lorenz curves line graphs uh, can be used to show a relationship over time uh, to explore the relationship between two different variables uh, or some sort of mathematical relationship and you probably had X and Y uh, when you're in school environment. Uh, by convention the horizontal axis, that's the one across the bottom, is X and the vertical axis uh, is Y. Uh, so uh, you can recall the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, and it's also true when you're looking at graphs as well. Uh, it's important to choose the right type of graph that clearly communicates whatever it is you're trying to demonstrate uh, with your chart. Time series. Um, sometimes you're trying to show how things have changed over time. And you, you can use a time series to display this. So, for example, you might be starting off with year one uh, and then after 10 years of an investment or 10 years of carrying out a particular proce procedure, uh, how did that affect some sort of variable over here? And here is an example, starting off at the beginning, after 10 years, what was the effect of doing a particular action? Okay, And you can see here, using a line graph, uh, we're taking a look at the uh, effect of this action on the variable sales. So in summary then, a uh, visual presentation of data offers many opportunities to convey information to those uh, who don't really want to read the numbers. It's a very fast form of communicating. Unfortunately, it also offers many opportunities to mislead the unwary. So if somebody's presenting data in an unusual format, you need to ask why they're using that format. Are they trying to hide something? Uh, there's a great variety of possible types of illustration, but you should always ask what's behind the, uh, the pictures and you need to really understand uh, what's happening.